problem with my connection. It dropped for some for some for some reason. I don't know. The stream is dead.
Okay, guys, let's continue. Sorry for this um, failure, <laughs> actually. So basically, um, I lost the connection for several seconds and then uh, the stream was broken. Um, okay, I hope it will be fixed soon. <clears throat> for now, let's continue. Um, so you can watch this on uh, YouTube. Uh, I think Oli provided you with the link on Chess24. Uh, it's still available on Twitch and uh, Facebook and Twitter, I suppose. I'm not sure that all the channels are still uh, alive. So let's quickly analyze this one uh, and uh, get to the other game. So uh, in this particular one, everything was pretty clear. So Black blundered this Bishop captures h7. Uh, but position was already quite um, annoying, I would say. So here, um, after I played e5, followed by knight to e4, I think I already got pretty uh, comfortable advantage. So as I said, instead of playing this, uh, bishop to c5, black should have considered playing e5, preventing me uh, from playing e5, that's the main idea. I would say. Uh, in that case, of course, I can grab space with the f5, but then, yeah, sort of like bishop to c5 makes sense. So black starts fighting for dark squares here uh, with the pawn on e5 instead of e6. It's easier to do. Uh, you can see this hole on d4. So uh, at some point, the knight can be relocated there, but this position is uh, double edged. I mean, I played it um, not once uh, with white pieces, or not exactly this position, maybe just similar pawn structures. So I would say that, yeah, for bleeds, uh, it's quite interesting for both colors. Okay, so one more game against somebody I've never ever played before. Um, so let's have a look. Let's have a look if we have anyone. So there are still lots of challenges. Thank you guys for your patience. But I'm not sure that there is anyone. No, one bite actually from Norway we have never played. So I'll accept that challenge now. And I'm playing with black pieces. Okay, so Undisputed says, Oli says and Probe Knight says that uh, the stream is back on Chess24. That's great. Okay. So we lost like 10 minutes or something. That's bad. Well, it's no longer that bad internet provider I had before because I changed it. So it's something else, I don't know. It's actually the first time when this new provider is behaving like this. All right. So now people say that everything goes perfect. Okay, great. So C3 here. It's a strange order of moves. What if I just take on e4? Let's check it. It's normally white starts with a rook e1 protecting the pawn. Uh, so the question, what opening is this? Sorry, I am uh, 1000, so... Uh, don't feel sorry to start with, and this is a Rui Lopez or Spanish game. Okay, I don't see compensation actually for a missing pawn here because I'm only one move before castling. I don't see a big danger along the e-file. I'm ready to play b5, so I can imagine something like rook e1, knight goes back to f6, then for, for instance, queen e2, trying to stop me from Castling because of bishop c6 and queen e7, but in that case, I can play b5 and castle anyway. And now it's a good question to take <coughs> on d4 or not to take or just castle. I think simple castling here will do. 
What's your least favorite opening to play against e4? I have no idea, guys. So everything looks all right to me. <laughs> the question, have you ever played against Magnus? No, I've never played against Magnus. But I played against Mamid Yarov two years ago, I think, when he was officially number two at that moment. And that went well. I won the game. But it was not a classic game, so it was a rapid game within uh, Pro Chess League. Nevertheless, that was Mamid Yarov, after all. So now I'm a pawn up. As I said before, I don't see compensation. So let's just play natural moves here. D5, grabbing space, preparing the development of the light script bishop. The question, is that your best win? Well, if we talk about the rating of my opponent, yes. That is my best achievement, of course. Because at that moment, he was 2800 something. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard to, to, to beat somebody stronger than that yeah but if we talk about the quality of the game i i don't think that it was my best win because there was um, literally no fight and in terms of what game you were proudest of well i'm really proud of several wins uh, in classic chess that one against Mami Diar was really pleasant, but definitely not my favorite win. Yeah, in this particular position, I mean, it's clear who's fighting for what. So I'm fighting for a win here. But the question is how to do it correctly so we have prevented bishop g5 so there is no bishop g5 threat anymore um there's still a question how to develop our uh, light squared bishop it has some problems with good squares for now there are several options of course i'll start with this move i'm not sure where i want to, to put that bishop so bishop g4 then h3, and if bishop h5, there's something like g4. It's also possible to play with a bishop g6. Probably, yeah, I should have tried bishop g4 simply, having the rook on a fate. Because in that case, after h3, bishop h5, g4, bishop g6, takes, takes. Uh, f5 is open, my rook is there. And after h3 and g4, that file is quite weakened. So it could have been a good idea for me. For some reason, I missed that. All right. It's not too late now, I think, to get back to that idea. So again, if h3, bishop h5, g4, I just play bishop g6, and I don't care after bishop g6, f g6, yeah, my pawns are a bit uh, weak, but I don't think they're real objects of attack for my opponent, but what is real is the f file I can use uh, with my rook and other heavy pieces after that. And of course, we can keen if white dares to play this g4. All right, white doesn't want to do that. That's probably a wise choice. Now I think it's time to get a bit more active here. Bishop e2 is quite passive. Okay. I'll just put queen on c7 to bring another rook to the center maybe. Knight e4 comes to mind, but d5 is hanging, so let's start with this move to make it possible. Now knight e4 is absolutely valid option. Let's see if we have something better than that. I don't know, position is quite rich for active possibilities. D5. 
do you have a five-year goal for your chess career want to become the world champion for instance no guys i'm 30 years old and uh, as a chess player i'm already retired so i'm just playing for pleasure no chess career whatsoever and no goals hands that goes to f5 uh, let's see what about just attacking this knight where it goes the question Baron 2259 says no stream again prom knight says stream is fine who's right and who's wrong hard to say let's see on my end it shows no problems currently so connection is still intact there are no drop frames it's usually a factor not a factor just a sign that something is something is bad with the stream okay so position has dramatically changed now we have two extra pawns and subsequently a winning position i mean not only two extra pawns extra exchange as well yeah it's it's absolutely lost for it the only concern here is time on the clock but we have more to start with and position is super simple you don't have to think a lot so all the moves are quite simple to do all right so what happened here uh well first of all i want to pawn rather quickly so knight takes e4 i think uh white's only option to regain the material was to take my knight here and to take on e5 but black has pair of bishops and no problems at all here that's why you usually just play uh rook to e1 instead of c3 or anything else or you may consider any other move protecting pawn e4 uh, so something like t3, something like knight to c3, an old move. Uh, all these are possible. Queen e2 as well, an option. Uh, so just protect e4 and you should be fine. All right. So Prom Knight says, I've heard about lots of people about 30 plus who have great goals in chess, although they are not very good yet. All right, but I changed careers, guys. So I'm a web developer now, professional. Uh, so, the stream goes perfect. So, another question. What is your training and routine for chess? Guys, I have just told you that I'm no longer a chess player. So, there is no routine. There is nothing. I'm just uh, playing. I'm training others. Not so many people, by the way. And uh, I'm doing these chess streams. That's it. Okay. So, let us continue. Let's have a look. Uh, we have played three games already against guys I've never ever played before. So now I, I think it's time to, to go back to normal order of challenges. All right. Undisputed 29. Accept. <laughs> Undisputed, by the way, asks, do you prefer PHP or JavaScript? Man, I'm doing both, actually. The one on the back end and the one on the front end. <laughs> so there is no preference. Prom Knight, with the IM title, you wouldn't have such bad chances, I guess. Chances of doing what? Of becoming the Grandmaster? Yeah, I think I still have chances. I have a one. I have. I have one norm actually. Uh, if you're talking about chances of becoming top Grandmaster, come on, you have to work so hard you can't even imagine to get there. 
you basically have to dedicate all your free time, all your time actually, to do that on my level. So it's, it's really hard. So people think that, okay, if you're already 2400 plus, well, you're just a few steps away from 2600, but it's an illusion. In fact, you're far away. You're just far away from there. Now, of course, if you're young and if you have a lot of time, if you don't have family, if you don't have kids, uh, yeah, try it. No questions. If you're 2400, if you're international master, young, lots, lots of possibilities. Yeah, just keep on playing, keep on training, and you're gonna be good. In my case, well, it's it's too late already to think about it. Do you have any career, for example, engineer? Are you listening even? I mean, I have just said that. I'm a web developer. That's fantastic. Let's go. So, um, back to actually annotating games, right? That's uh, what we are here for. Um, we have exchanged dark squid bishops. I think it's a good exchange for white only, because as we may notice, white controls now dark squares much better, and black is having problems with the light squid bishop, which is still on the board and limited with own pawns. And the typical plan for this pawn structure would deal with uh, Karlsbad reverse as uh, the minority attack b5, b4. It's not great now because I have the access to c5 square. I mean, in this particular case, I can simply ignore that and focus on the attack um, on the king side, but normally, I mean, you can do something like this, knight b3 and knight c5, just stopping everything and then playing before supporting the knight. Something like this. But let's see, do we have something uh, on the king side already? Like uh, knight f7, king f7? No. Taking on g6 also makes no sense to me. Uh, what we can do though um, is to, you know, gradually relocate our piece like queen f2, rook e3, rook h3, something like that. This looks good to me. Let's try it. The only question is, should I stop that b4? Probably yes. Let's just play a3 to make sure that black will spend uh, a few more moves to prepare a5 because b5 is hanging. So we can use that time to bring our pieces a bit closer to the h file. Maybe create some first real threats. So did you have did you have the goal to become a professional or why did you train so hard in earlier days? Yes, of course, when I was a kid and you know I started at the age of um, five years old actually. Yeah, I really wanted to become a world champion. That was my dream. At some point I wanted just to become a professional and uh, yeah, at some point I decided that it's time to, to do something else. That's it. Okay. I still don't see threats. So if knight takes c5, f takes c5, I'm happy with that. So let's just bring the queen to h3, closer to the king. Not really attacking h7 because it's protected. Um, yeah. 
but I'm exerting more and more pressure on Black's position, so I guess we're doing the right thing here. Okay, now, f file is open. It looks very logical just to bring the rook to f4, another one to f1, and just attack it on the f file. And maybe at some point bring the rook to h4, attack on h7, and yeah. Uh, probably we already have a threat of uh, bishop h7, knight h7, and rook h4. Not that bad one, by the way, because if knight goes away in that position, there's rook h8 checkmate. And if not, well, then we could have captured that knight on h7. Okay, knight is on g6. Now what? Grab it with the bishop and then play rook to f1. Nah, I don't really like it. Maybe a rook g4 and then rook to f1. Also a bit slow, but I guess it's a good idea to keep the bishop on d3 because we have a plan like knight f3, knight g5. Maybe we should even try it right now. Knight f3, knight to g5, attack on h7. Looks terrible for black. And since we have the bishop on d3, h6 is impossible. Because we can grab the pawn on g6. I mean, bishop g6, f takes, and rook takes. And it's also like the beginning of the end. Look, black species are not coordinated here. So... We're really close now. Let's just play knight g5. H7 is under attack. I, I think h6 is just the only move here. In which case, if we take on f7, queen f7, and take on g6, of course, black queens after queen f2, but my idea was just to get back. Because in that case, g6 is really hanging, and there is... Super annoying pressure on h6 and g7 and stuff. Black managed to protect the knight. But what about g7? So we play queen g3 and then just h4, h5 and so on. f6 drops the knight on g6. Wasn't it possible to grab the knight... Oh, I missed something here, by the way. No, not really. So, bishop on g6 is anyway protected. So. It's lost. So, the question from Prom Knight, wasn't it possible to grab g6 and play rook h4? Well, after f takes g6, I didn't see anything uh, concrete, like rook f4, knight g6. If I take on g6, Clear, if h g6 then rook h4 uh, wins, more or less. <laughs> uh, but f takes g6, so what? Like, I don't see anything. So if rook h4, h6, black is fine. Yeah, this position should be still better for white because that bishop is terrible and our knight is potentially quite mm -hmm. annoying. But I thought keeping the bishop on d3 and just exerting more and more pressure on the king side will be... Uh, much more promising compared to this pawn structure. Um, so, uh, there is a nice comment on YouTube right now. It's all about the game, and I hope that it makes you glad even without being fully dedicated to it now. Just makes me happy, and your videos make me even happier. Thank you. Thank you. That's really, yeah. Really good comment, and uh, I'm really glad to know that my videos make someone happy. That's really good. Uh, the pawn structure can be very comfortable for black here, says Prom Knight. Yes, but in my case, I, I have just nearly checkmated my opponent, so it was much easier to win that position. So, I mean, look, look at this situation right now. We have so many pieces on the king side, while black is just disorientated completely. So the first plan should be just, just to attack, right? And for attack, you need resources. That's why I played rook g4, knight f3, knight g5. So it's easier to win uh, if you keep that bishop on the board, in my opinion. Okay, let us continue. And the next is shelling forward. Okay, shelling is very uh, silent to die. I mean, on chat. 
let's see, maybe Shellen is not, no, Shellen is there. And this is a real challenge, just as usual. Okay. We have played something like this already, I believe. And here I played d4, where after I was not satisfied with my position, like at all. So what should I play here? I mean, knight to c6 simply. Yeah, let's try that move. Or maybe it was like that, and I played d4 in that position instead of dc4 I played right now. I don't know. Let's see. So what I want to do, I want to provoke white to play b takes c4, um, in which case the pawn structure is no longer symmetrical. No, dc4. So white is not taking that risk. Probably smart. Probably smart choice. Okay. This position is rather depressing because, you know, it's boring <laughs> to start with. Um, okay. What is the right way to play it? Anyway. <clears throat> Knight to b4. Is it something? Well, maybe it's not that bad. That was my initial idea, but um, I was like, what to do after queen e2? I can probably try queen to d3 again. Not sure if it gives me anything concrete. But then I realized that, okay, even if white plays a3 at some point, I just get back and then b3 is weakened, so maybe I can attack it. So I think it should be enough. Let's grab that bishop. Let's play queen c7 now. I guess I'm fine here. Check. Let's take it. Or maybe knight e4. Tricky one. Just knight e4, a3. Nah, it's risky. Let's just take it. And then a6, that goes back to c3, I believe. We can then attack that 95 with the bishop d6 or something. Yeah. Black shouldn't be bad here. If knight c7, then rook a7, and the knight is trapped. So, what white is going to do here? I believe this position is just deadly equal. This way. Interesting. What about playing this? Can I take on e3 now? f takes c3, a, b5, c, b5. No, I think it's better for me to take here. And then to take there. There now.
<clears throat> so I think I have slightly better pawn structure can be not enough to achieve anything significant should be just fine to have a pleasant position with some slight chances so now I'm bringing my key to the center what is playing very very aggressive chess on the king side should I prevent all this activity somehow or just focus on the other side of the board on the other hand one has some advantage in space there let's just try this trying to damage the pawn structure on the king side now because queen side is uh, probably mine now we have protected outside passer on the h file white on the other hand now has a slightly better bishop than before so it has more options more perspectives here should i play e5 now i think that's the way to go So we control the situation. Now we want to play something like b5. We want it one move ago. Maybe we still want to do it. The other question is, should we? Yeah, I mean, why not? Doesn't look that bad, right? yeah this move is great so the question is how to respond to this one this one is truly annoying Yeah, very hard. Yeah, I guess white is better now. Or at least it's just an equal position. I don't know. Yeah, it's a draw now. It's a draw. Okay. So, at some point I thought that uh, I outplayed my opponent. Probably it was an illusion. Or maybe I was really kind of, you know, close to that. 
So maybe instead of playing king e6, I should have tried rook a4 immediately, right? Um, like king e4. Now I can play b5, but then bishop takes e5. Yeah, so e5 is anyway hanging. But here I can probably start with this and then play b5. So I'm saving one temple, which appeared to be very uh, important. And uh, at the same time, uh, as you can see, my king on e6 appeared uh, quite vulnerable to this attack on the sixth rank. But of course, well, when you play bleeds, uh, it's hard to predict it will be like that. Um, yeah, because I didn't expect that bishop e5 without grabbing anything will be so powerful anyway. I just didn't expect that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but at some point, I guess white missed something. Or maybe I missed something somewhere here, but everything looked very logical, right? Rook a7 was played, why not rook a4 immediately? Because I thought white may uh, think of just attacking my knight uh, with rooks on the d-file, so I wanted to be able to do something like this. So, as you can see, I'm not putting my rook on the d-files that my knight is pinned. I'm just protecting it with both rooks here. And the next plan is the same, just to play f6, king f7, king e7, so gradually centrali centralizing the king. Once my king is on e7, protecting the knight, my rooks can be regrouped. That's the idea, okay? All right, thanks for the game. <clears throat> Let's have a look who's next. Duncan McConaughey, accept. Let's go. Black pieces. And again, something closed. Catalan this time. When the knight is on c3, the typical thing for black to do is to put the bishop on a6, attack on c4. Because when the knight is on d2, it makes no sense. c4 is usually protected and white is ready to play e4. When the knight is on c3, black's main counterplay here is <clears throat> to attack c4 so that deflecting white from or destructing, it's better to say destructing white from, from this straightforward e4. Now if knight d5, e d5, bishop d5, then knight e5, and if bishop i8, then knight from e5 goes to c6, and if d takes c5, then something like bishop takes c2 as far as I remember. Okay, in this position we just take, bring the knight to c6. I guess black is just doing well here. Already. C close Catalan is not bad and not passive whatsoever. So, just check the database. Even super tactical players play it with black, so come on. Just uh, tell me which pieces of mine are passive in this position. All pieces are good. In this particular case, I think black has a better set of pieces than white because white has this Catalanian bishop on g2, which is not necessarily active. All right. So. All right, so knight to a5, attacking the knight, or just Knight takes d4, queen d4, bishop f6. No. Doesn't work because of bishop e5. Oh, okay. Let's play knight a5. If before the knight goes to c4, or maybe rook takes c3, winning the pawn. Yeah, I guess. Now what has a real problem? How to protect the knight? So like bishop d2. Knight goes to a4. Well, okay. Everyone has the right for the opinion. But just check the database who plays it as black. Sword by Elo. 
it's a top choice for many top players. <laughs> okay, what about queen b5 now? Queen b5, rook to b1, bishop takes a3, wins a pawn, right? Right. And if before the knight is c4, so we finally win the fight for this c4 square. And maybe we have something more than that. No, I don't think that we have something better than knight c4. Maybe instead of queen b5, bishop b5 is also a move. I have no idea. Looks nice anyway. Black has no weaknesses here. Like, at all. Let's go back. What is our next target? D4. What about G5 move here? <laughs> Bring the bishop to C1. Is it too much or just okay? Well, let's try it. <laughs> After all, it's just a bleach game. Now let's just step back. Yeah, I like my position. Yeah, g5 looks a bit odd, I know, but it's all about uh, fighting for space. Now, if white plays b5, what's the point behind bishop b7 is that b5 comes without a tempo, and then we can play knight a5. Rook to d1. Protecting d4, but not creating any other threat, I think. So like e4, maybe... I don't think white is ready for it. Let's just double rooks along the c-file, then. Exerting pressure along the c-file. So we have some sort of advantage in development, even, of some sort. And this... Okay, let's protect g5 simply. Now it has also an isolated pawn on d4. h4. All right. What is really fighting here? Is it a good moment for us to play some like f5? Ah. Doesn't look that great, but maybe it's a way to go just to. I missed knight to c5 move. That's stupid. Maybe it's it's not a big deal. So if knight takes c5, b takes c5, and if d takes c5, we can play some like bishop d5 even. So something something like that. Greedy but efficient. In this case, what to prefer? If rook takes b7, then d c5, right? We can take on b4, bishop goes away, we can take on a3 then. Or we can take on d4 with similar ideas. And let's just take here, I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe this g5 was too much. For now, though, we have what? We have extra material. We have extra pawn. And we still control more space. Than our opponent, so I think we're doing well. This knight on c4 is quite good, limiting the dark squid bishop.
as for Improm Knight, <clears throat> just open the database, filter the games to have close Catalan played by Grandmaster Kovalev from Canada with black pieces. Look at his stats and look at uh, the level of his opponents, including 2600s, 2700s, so on and so forth. He's just winning with black. I mean, he's not making a draw or something. He's winning, okay? So it's really not a question of the opening system, which is quite solid and quite good. It's just about, you know, being able to play it. And, you know, I'm just losing this game all of a sudden. It's super annoying. I lost the game. My goodness. At some point, yeah, you just uh, made this comment about for white it is to win and for black to pray about close Catalan. I was so annoyed <laughs> with this phrase, I mean. Um, yeah, I, I made a super stupid blunder here. Well, come on. The only idea behind rook c1 was actually to play bishop to c6. I had already two extra pawns at this moment. So I could have played literally any move which um, doesn't blunder that, right? So for example, what is a good one? Let's see. Well, probably just queen e7. A tempo move, attacking the queen, trying to simplify the things because we have two extra pawns and so on. All right, nevertheless. Nevertheless, um, probably I could have played it better somewhere here. So taking an a3 was not necessary, uh, but yeah, indeed, there was a threat of queen to f8, right? All right. Yeah, that was fine. I mean, probably this rook takes c1 was not a correct, correct move. Ah, come on, it was just a time trouble and uh, I just focused on the chat, not on playing the game. Thanks for the game. So, uh, Terry007, accept. Twenty-seven ninety-four. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, on Tuesday, I made everything to come back to 2800s. Now I'm a bit lower than that. Uh, who cares about this rating, after all? Casting, casting, and rook eight. One of the interesting lines. A3 is strange, so you kind of force me to take on C3, which is something I want to do anyway. Rook 8 is not entirely stupid, so as you can see, it's uh, part of the preparation of uh, E5. So... If we play e5 right now, there is d5, d5, knight e5 tactics, rook e5, bishop h7, and queen is hanging on d8. Um, we can play bishop e4 here, it's one of the possibilities, obviously. But then bishop goes away, there is knight e2 with the tempo, and then e4, so bishop will be a target there. So what to do? Just knight e7, or knight c6, knight a5, also way to go, or just c5. Let's try this direction. E4. What about this? Kind of experimental way of playing it. <clears throat> so I'm trying to create a weakness on C4, and D5 is definitely not correct. 
Maybe it was hard to find a better move though, because e4 was under pressure, but something like bishop g5 should have been better than d5, because now position is um, stable here, and I have this great c5 square for my knight. So it's definitely what uh, white should have tried to avoid. I mean, white has a pair of bishops, right? But position has been closed. And d5 is uh, like a part of it. So white is actually doing exactly what they should avoid, having a pair of bishops. OK, that bishop is no longer active. And this knight can go to c5. Now, no one stops me from bringing the knight to c5. No one fights for that square. Right? <clears throat> Let's bring it to c5. OK, this is a blunder. Should I grab that exchange, though? Well, I mean, why not? Or maybe we can take a pawn. What is better? Or maybe both. After queen e3, I can take here first. And then an a5. But if I take on a5, there is c5. Unnecessary counter play for white. So let's control c5 first. A b6 just opens a file, which is great for me because I have rooks. My rooks need open files. It's a simple thing when you play with the extra exchange. Okay. <clears throat> Will be not so simple to convert it, I guess. But we will try our best to do it. Slight sim simplification shouldn't play a big role here. Can I take there? Yes, I attacked the bishop. Oh, what am I doing? I'm so stupid. God, I still have a better position, but... Or maybe it's it's the shortest way to win it. So let's calculate b5, push b7, b4, takes b3. Yeah, looks like it's, uh, you know, a happy blunder because with the exchange it was not so simple. Now it's really simple. Just bring in the pawn to queens. All right, so extra minor piece, but here comes d6, shit. <laughs> No, it's um, yeah. double trouble. All right, rook b8, d7, bishop to a6. <clears throat> rook c8, rook c8, d8 and... Yeah, it's fine. And if rook a7, then bishop c4. I suppose. All right or not? If bishop b5, there is rook b7. But if uh, bishop c4, there is the same shit. <laughs> okay. No. All right. I understand what to do. So bishop c4. And now bishop e6. Rook c8 takes. Okay, so I found a way to stop white from actually promoting that pawn or regaining the piece. Everything's fine now. So we have a threat of playing uh, king f8 simply and then rook d8. All right. So 
So yeah, this maneuver decides bishop c4, bishop c6, bishop b6, rook c5, okay. Let's just grab that one. Now it's about converting the advantage, which should be doable. Mm, of course, after several blunders, this may be also a problem. And I have 47 seconds. All right, so I have to focus freely. So now we have simply extra minor piece, no pawns for opponent. What is our target? It's probably um, G2, right? So let's gradually get there. Rook is protecting the bishop, so everything is under control. Now we can play this move, I guess. Of course, it was unnecessary. So if king takes rook, then bishop c4 was planned. <clears throat> Checkmate is threatening. I have enough time to promote my pawn, I think. With a checkmate. Okay, I was close, actually. I was really close to losing it. And I blundered several several things in a row, but uh, yeah, fortunately, it was fine at the end. So after d6, somehow I forgot about the power of this pawn. I forgot about the fact that my king is on the back ring. It's really... Uh, yeah, really dangerous, but fortunately I had this one. So after rook a7, uh, initially I wanted to play this, after, after which rook b7 actually finishes the game. I mean, uh, it's no longer, um, it's no longer about uh, winning the game, it's about fighting for a draw, because after rook d8 there is rook b5 and e5 is hidden, so white is just a uh, pawn up. So after bishop to c4, I could have tried this rook to b7, but in that case, I think um, black can fight for a win with... Um, so rook a8, rook a7 doesn't change anything, right? Uh, if rook d8, then there is rook to c7, attacking the bishop. And if bishop goes to e6, there is rook to c... No, rook c8 would just take it twice. Yeah, so rook d8 was just good enough. Rook d8 was just good enough here. I thought that rook f8, during the game, I thought that rook f8 will be the correct move. Uh, not to, you know, hand the rook because indeed it's not protected, but as we can see, it doesn't help white. The fact that it is not protected. So rook c8 would just take, not the pawn on d7, but the rook itself, twice and win the game. Yeah, so the maneuver of the bishop towards e6 wins the game. All right, that was, yeah. Interesting. So the key moment here in this game, once again, uh, so like your problem started when you played d5, I suppose. So you should do something to um, actually keep this position dynamic. So to 
leave a chance for black to actually take on d4 in which case position becomes more and more open yes black gets some targets but you get some targets as well especially your bishops are happy in that case because bishops can be good only in the open position so as i said something like uh bishop g5 or maybe i don't know uh bishop b2 or maybe even taking on e5 and playing bishop b2 even that is kind of better than just playing d5 here i think might be wrong no i mean d5 d5 is not good it's also kind of giving me this c5 square for nothing absolutely and yeah that is doing good okay <coughs> so let's see prom knight accept Whew, gonna be a challenge. Oh, by the way, Prom Knight, your rating has increased. That's the sign that, yeah, we're getting better. It's good. Main lines. Have you prepared something? Concrete. One of the possibilities here. So the idea is just to quickly castle, I suppose, maybe right now, maybe just a bit later. And then to attack both this uh, A2, B3, C4 formation and E5 pawn if there is a chance. Something like this. So here, here comes some conversation about Cologne on chat. Yeah, I had some problems tonight getting back from work. Lots of drunk people wearing strange clothes. <laughs> yeah, Friedel says, aber Karneval im Rheinland ist toll. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, so as far as I remember, this is the idea behind A5, the main idea of this. I'm wondering how how I'm going to get to work tomorrow. <laughs> there may be a huge problem with, with the transportation. So Cologne is yeah, it's crazy right now. And what is really interesting, we're working on Monday and on Tuesday as well. And um, exactly on Monday and Tuesday, the carnival will be uh, in the district where our office is, is situated. It's going to be really crazy. I don't know. So Bishop by 6 attack on c4, b5, logical. But now our bishop is kind of interesting, so it has perspectives. Position is double-edged. I mean, what has a pair of bishops? And the position is quite open here. But a black is better developed, right? It's not so simple for white to complete the development because now bishop attacks g2. Well, at least I want to believe it's not so simple for white. Otherwise, I'll be just uh, smashed more or less 
Okay. So bishop d3 is coming. So if we castle, there is bishop to d3. Maybe we should castle the other side. Or maybe to play something something else at all completely like d6 attacking e5 is it a good idea or it's just bullshit i don't know i just don't know let's try this move uh Sheldon ford asks is carnival is a thing in in ukraine well there are some things that are well, may remind you of, uh, you know, this German carnival stuff, but it's definitely not not the same. And um, like, it, it's usually not separated from, from you know, some, some occasions, specific occasions. So maybe it's like a form of celebrating something concrete, but it's not like a separate activity, which is... Uh, uh, a carnival here in in Germany, for instance, probably probably in Brazil, the motherland of carnivals. I have no idea. I never investigated um, within this area, so I have no idea. But no, it, it, it it's not like that in Ukraine for sure. So should I grab an e5 or what should I do here in this position? It's really hard to understand. It's really dangerous for me to take on g2, I guess. On the other hand, it's really tempting. No, I'll just take this one. very strange position i mean i don't know it's dangerous for both sides here dangerous for both but i still believe i'm fine here bishop f5 okay where to put my queen now d5 comes to mind c4 b3 even just trying to simplify the stuff completely. I know I want to put my queen on d5, just normal central position. And I still believe everything is under control, more or less. But now here comes this threat of bishop e4. And I'm no longer sure <laughs> if everything is under control. Okay. But I can put my queen on c5, right? Preventing white's castling short, which is good. Also intending to bring my queen to e3, which is probably also good. And now what? Knight to c4. Continuing with the attack or just castling and finally consolidating this stuff. Yeah, let's castle first. Maybe bishop takes f3 was a move there. I don't know. Uh, queen f4 attacking the bishop on f5. Okay. To take or not to take. To play knight to c4 here. I know so many options. Hard to say. Let's just bring the knight to c4, the temple. Okay. Um. Yeah. 
we have some extra material here, I believe. Two extra pawns, right? Yeah. Should we care about King B5? No, I think we should quickly push our pawns here. Okay. This is lost. This is lost for white. Um, so what happened? Uh, yeah, it was a very interesting game, actually. It's really hard to say anything concrete because it was a crazy position. Uh, probably I missed the moment here to play bishop takes f3, but then rook e1 is probably very strong uh, with the idea for g5. So maybe, yeah, maybe I played the best move. Yeah, even this position was not so clear, but yeah, I guess white made a mistake a bit earlier. So probably this was not so good after all, right? So I have no idea. Most likely a3 is also you know, sort of mistake and bishop, as far as I remember, bishop usually goes to d2 instead of b2. Just to avoid problems with the knight being pinned so that you can tolerate the bishop on b4 for a long time. So you don't have to play a3 or something. And basically a5 is the idea, um, you know, exactly against this a3 move. So if you play that, you weaken b3, which is a defender of c4. So now I grab the bishop, I play a4. And I have a target on c4. I can also think of just moving my bishop back to e7 with a similar idea, but I thought it's better to do it immediately, not to waste time, right? Um, so what's going on? I always make the same mistake in this variation. What, what's going on? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Prom knight, probably about this. Uh, we can end on the B3. I have no idea. All right, guys. Uh, I think it's enough for today. Um, sorry for technical problems. But uh, really, this is something that uh, I cannot control. So in the vast majority of cases nowadays, uh, we have uh, pretty smooth streams, but you know, sometimes uh, it's just glitching and uh, even a second is enough. I mean, one second when you lose a connection, well, it, it, it really affects the stream. So I hope the rest of the stream after we go back, the uh, video and sound uh, was more or less fine on your end. And I hope you've learned something. All right. So see you next week. Um, with two banters, again, one on Tuesday and one on Thursday. As I said, uh, we get back to normal flow with training Tuesdays um, starting from the next month until the end of this month, I'm going to play banters exclusively. Uh, yeah, with that said, uh, thanks a lot again. Wish you all the best. See you. Bye bye.